Amen. This is Evangelist Latrice Thomas of Discipling Ministries, a place I'm not concerned about a building, but the building of a people. Amen. Um, I just thank God uh, that we're going to push on today. Amen. We've had uh, some turbulent weather here in the um, bluegrass state here of Kentucky. Amen. But we're going to continue to push. Amen. We're going to continue to be about our father's business, no matter what's coming our way. Amen. We're going to push forth in the things of God. Amen. So we're going to continue to go on on today. Amen. There is a word for the Lord for from the Lord for the people of God on today. Amen. So we're going to go forth in it. Amen. And that is Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. And we're going to go forth on today. It's titled Light Bearers. Light Bearers. Amen. And it says, the word of God says, I'm coming from the New King James Version. Amen. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but only, not in as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Amen. Amen. I just thank God. I ask that God just pray that God blesses the hearers, readers, and doers of his most holy word. I've read Philippians 2 verses 12 through 18. May God add the bl uh, blessing to his hearers, readers, and doers of his most holy word. Amen. And for reference of the topic on today, it is, I can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. Amen. Father God, we come before you on today, Lord God, giving you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, O oh Lord. I thank you and I praise your name right now for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, Lord God. I ask and I pray right now, Lord God, that you bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory, Lord God. Have your way in and through them right now, Father God. May your people hear all of you and none of me this day, Lord God. Rejoice and we rejoice in you, Lord God. We honor you. We seek your faith right now. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. We say amen. Amen. Again on today, I can't do it for you. Amen. I can't do it for you. Amen. Um, as we mentioned on today that the uh, weather here is kind of, um, you know, bad here in the Kentucky, uh, greater state of Kentucky. Amen. The bluegrass state. Uh, we had some snow over the night. Amen. And uh, roads a bit icy. Amen. But we must be about our father's business. Amen. Now is not the time. Amen. To call in. Amen. Now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to Throw in the towel, amen. And I just thank God for our, our apostle, uh, Chauncey D. Craig, that had um, pretty much uh, spoken to all of us at the uh, end of last year saying, amen, the towel, towel isn't even ours to throw in. Amen. So the towel is not ours to throw in. So we have got to know that God has us. Um, you know, we we're you know, he is in control. God knew that this weather was going to take place even before any of us you know, got up this morning, amen, before any of us even started out this year. But I just thank and I praise God that God is in control, amen, that we're in the safety of our own homes, amen. No matter where you are at this time, you are safe and you're kept, amen. So I just thank God, amen. My environment today right now is in my basement in my office, amen. But I still thank God that, you know, I still have the ability to push. I still have the ability and the mindset that, God, no matter what it is that you've put before me, 
I am, you know, I, I'm determined to do it. I'm determined to see it full course. And that's got to be our hearts cry in this season that there is a determination. You know, they always said there is an expectation, amen. But how many of you know there are some requirements on our part, amen? A lot of times we're expecting things from God, amen. But we have got to push in the things of God. We have got to be about our Father's business, amen. So I just thank God for everyone that's uh, joining us on Facebook Live, amen. Amen. Um, as Apostle says, that we're on the book on today, amen. So with us being on the book, let us journey to the book, amen. So we're going to push forward. And it says here, therefore, my beloved. You know, a lot of times people use that term, amen, my beloved and uh, things of that nature. But do they really know it's a term of endearment, something that's near and dear to your heart? Amen. We have the heart of God. We have the mindset of God. Amen. And, you know, we're precious in his sight. Therefore, my beloved, that lets you know. So if you ever, ever doubt your existence, if you ever doubt your, you know, your importance, you got to know that, you know, that there is favor in your life. Amen. And there's a reason for your existence. Amen. So we say here in the word of God, as you have always obeyed, you know, that that's a check on learning right there. As you have always obeyed. Amen. So that means, okay, you have already shown to be consistent with the things of God. You've already shown to be about your father's business. There's some things that has already set you apart from the world, amen. There's some things, amen, that has already, you know, some things over your life that has already proven you to be the called out ones, amen. Because as you have always obeyed the things of God, um, that that's that that is one thing is, as you have always obeyed, that means that you have always answered the call. Yes, we have, you know, fallen short, but I just thank God this is admonished as you've always obeyed, as you've always been in the wheel, as you have always determined to be in the things of God. He's saying right here, not as in my presence only. Some people only obey when mom and dad are around. Some people only obey when it's time for accolades to come around. Some people only obey, amen, when they think that the spotlight is on them, amen. But as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence. So when mom and dad have left the building, will you still do what thus saith the Lord? Amen. When when the teacher's out of the classroom, will you still obey? And will you still be that well-behaved child? Amen. Not the teacher's pet. Amen. But will you still be that well-behaved person in the body of Christ? So not only in my presence. Amen. So God is just basically saying, you know, and I, I'll just give an example. Amen. Um, some people don't show up, you know, if, if they feel that the pastor is not going to be there. Some people don't show up if they feel their favorite song isn't going to be played. Some people don't show up if, if, you know, they feel that things are not in their favor. Amen. But here, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence. So there's a requirement that the same man of God or woman of God that you display, amen, before your leaders, the same man or woman of God that you display, amen, out in the public, amen, you have got to be that way year round, 24 seven, amen. So 24 hours out of the day, seven days of the week, you've got to be that same person that said that they're sold out for Jesus. How many people have sang that song, sold out? Out, amen. My mind is made up. Amen. I'm sold out for the things of God. So many times people say, you know, they're they're sold out for certain individuals or they're they're sold out, you know, for, you know, a, a certain uh, organization or something like that. Amen. And, you know, that my mind kind of my, my wheels get to spinning when I see people that are always posting about, you know, their favorite organizations or things of that nature that they're involved in, amen, and they're probably the first to show up on the scene, amen, but you never see them in the household of faith. You never see them in the body of Christ. You you never even see them, amen, just, just stepping forth to, to come into the house of the Lord, amen. And, you know, one thing that I'm reminded in the word of God, amen, is that I was glad when they said unto me, 
let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And I was glad what they said unto me. Amen. Let us gather together. Amen. Forsake not the gathering together of ourselves. Amen. That is got to be our heart's cry with urgency in this time. Amen. That's got to be our heart's cry. Amen. With urgency in this hour. As I spoke to the men and women of God earlier. Amen. Um, as we try. And you know, I just think about these things about for the trying of your faith because, you know, the weather first. You know, first off, it, it would seem as though no service could take place on today because of, you know, the highways and the byways had a little bit of ice and snow, amen. Um, but then it seemed when we tried to get online, amen, that, you know, Zoom, amen, was kind of out of scope, amen. But here it is. I just thank God for the man of, uh, man of God, amen, uh, Minister Alfred, Minister Jeannie, amen, that mentioned Facebook, amen. So and I just Thank God there's got to be a push in this hour, amen. Some people take one no. Some people take one negative situation and they, they just throw in the towel and they counted it. They counted quits. They counted done. Amen. But there's got to be a, a level of urgency in this hour. God, no matter what, I desire to push forth in you. I desire to I desire to see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. And so I mentioned to, you know, those that were briefly online earlier is that, you know, God is calling folk home. Amen. That that, you know. No one, no one, it catches everyone off of surprise because no one of, uh, of us know our life's agenda, amen? No one knows if we're even going to, you know, wake up, go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning. No one knows if we're going to make it to point A or point B safe, amen? So there are no guarantees in this thing called life, but there's one guarantee, amen, that as long as we make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, amen, we desire to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful faithful servant. Amen. We desire, amen. And I just think here, as it says, as the word of God says here that, you know, not as in my presence only, amen, but now much more in my absence. Now much more, amen. If we think about how, you know, even the apostle was preparing people at that time, not, not, not much more, amen. Christ was, is no longer on the scene, amen, physically, amen. But we know it, you know, he sent a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, amen. But here his presence is needed. Now that his presence is not here, amen, we're, we're told and we're, we're expected. There's a level of expectation that we have got to be Christ representation on this earth. Amen. And as the uh, elders would say on this here earth, amen. We have got to represent Christ in everything that we think, say, and do. Amen. Folk not going to know. Amen. Folks aren't going to know, you know, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, some people that we're affiliated with and things of that nature. Amen. They're going to see and experience Christ through us. You know, one thing I could uh, just recall, amen, uh, before the weather got a little turbulent a few days ago, and I've learned See, I'm I'm old Georgia girl, amen. I always say that, amen. And um, I, I just thank God I, I I miss that Georgia weather, amen. But one thing I've learned here, the years I've been in Kentucky, is you got to be prepared, amen. There's you've got to be prepared no matter where you live. So let me correct that. You've got to be prepared. But I found myself out, amen. And I went to Sam, stocked up on a few things there. And then I went to the store, stocking up on water and things of that nature, bottles of water. I, I don't just get one, uh, you know, one case, amen. I'm I'm one of those. Uh, I get that from my mom. I stock up, amen. And so in that stocking up, uh, the guy that was checking me out at the register, amen, he just seemed so happy and, you know, gleeful and everything else. And, you know, anybody else may have, you know, looked down on him or things of that nature. And I said, you're mighty happy on today. And he said, yeah, he said, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy. He said, you know, today makes 10 years that I have been drug free, 10 years that I've been sober and nothing in my system. And here it is, you know, even with customers behind me and everything, I'm like, to God be the glory. Amen. Look at you. I mean, you know, and, and I just even said, you know, you don't look like all that you've been through. Knowing I've never met the man before and everything else, but I mean, can we rejoice in someone else? Amen. And through that rejoicing, amen, I could just see him, you know, get a little more gleeful and everything that he was doing, amen. But do we realize other people have testimonies? 
testimonies? Do we realize that other people have tests and trials that, you know, they go through in their life, amen, but can they see Christ through you? Can they feel Christ through you? Can they experience Christ through you, amen? And I just began to share with the man, amen, that, uh, and I, I just proclaim, man of God, amen, that God has greater in store for you, amen. So we've got to be able to impart life into the lives of, you know, people that God placed uh, around us, amen, and not just how we say our circle, amen. Those people that we hang out with, amen. We've got to be able to impart life into everyone that we meet and that we encounter, amen, because you've got to look at, look over these uh, years and over the times of your life, amen, who imparted life into your life, who spoke into you when you didn't even believe in yourself, who spoke words of encouragement into you, amen, who, who actually put those words of life in you that gave you that oomph and that extra, you know, push to just want to continue to forward on into the things of God. Amen. So that's the way that we've got to be even in his absence, push forward. Amen. And it says here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not just by works. Amen. Uh, because I've heard that saying before. Amen. You have a lot of good people around here. Amen. But it doesn't mean that they've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They they may know to, you know, contribute or do something. Amen. That seems good. Amen. But is their, is, is their heart purified? Have they been purged? Amen. Have they been really laid aside every weight and sin? Amen. Have they really given their life over? Over to God, and I'm like, God, make me over, amen. Wash me, purge me with hyssop. That's got to be our heart's desire, amen. Because I think about it, you know, even as I go forth, amen. And I just think about, it. like I said, I'm one that I overstock, amen. Not just the overstock.com, amen. So anyone that's on the video can possibly see if I move to the side, amen. Let me get to this uh, other side here. You're going to see stocks of water, amen. And it's not just, you know, one or two, amen. It may be stacked four or five deep, amen, but even having a few rows behind it, amen. So let me ask you this, this question. How much of us are stocked in the word of God? How many of us have taken inventory of how much we of God we really have in us? How many of us have really taken inventory? God, I desire to have more and more of you. And let me let me do this correction here. You know, a lot of people go, they fill themselves up with the word. They fill themselves up with the latest song. Amen. But how much of God is really in the inside that you say, God, I, I don't even think the way that I used to. I don't even act the way that I used to. Certain things that used to catch my, my, my appetite no longer are spiritually appeasing to me. Certain things are just no longer even desirable in my life because God, you have had a change in my life. Amen. A change has come over me. You know, we sing that song, but has a change really, truly come over each and every one of us in this hour that we say, God, I desire more. And here, work out your own salvation. And that's why I started this off here. I can't do it for you. And, you know, there's times I tell my kids, I can't do it for you, boo-boo. I cannot do it for you. You know, your, your, your men and women of God that are placed over your life, your apostles, your pastors, your, your teachers, your evangelists, amen, they can't do it for you. They can they can usher out a word, amen. They can they can lay hands on the sick, amen. They can do those things, amen. They can give you all the teaching and they can equip you with everything that God has birthed within them, amen. But it's something in you that's got to ignite, amen. There's something within you that's got to ignite. I'm just reminded, I always laugh at my, my children and I always mention my children, my, my nieces and my nephews, amen. And I'll never forget one time I uh, bought my, I always stock up for my parents too. I bought, uh, I had actually sent my parents some, uh, it was supposed to be some waterproof matches, amen. And um, the last time we were home, the matches were outside and my nephew Jane was like, auntie, you gotta go uh, take the matches in the house because it's about to rain. And you know, I was like, nah, they're waterproof, amen. But how many, you know, when you think about the side of that match box, it's until the very tip of that match touches the side of that box that it's stricken 
you know, to the right or to the left, that it ignites a flame. There's got to be something inside of you, amen, that's tapped into the Holy Spirit that causes you to ignite a flame that say, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. Anybody ask you, what's the matter with me? I'm running for my life because something has ignited me. Something has caught a flame within me that says, God, for you, I live, for you, I die, and you, I have my very being. You know, so many times we get so caught up with the things of the world, amen, but there's got to be something that ignites within each and every one of us, amen, to just make us just want to run on, amen, in Christ Jesus. And he says right here, for it is God who works in you both to will, to will. There's got to be some willpower in you, amen. There's got to be something that's pushing you on, amen. And if I have any children on the line, amen, I know the world always teaches them, amen, about Thomas the engine. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, but we got to say in Christ, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can, because in Christ, amen, I can do all things, amen. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me, through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, amen. So a lot of times we're trying to strengthen ourselves. A lot of times we're trying to do things in our own power, amen. But something in Christ it, to will us, amen, to go forward, amen, will power and to do for his good pleasure. You know, we see that that's capital H and it's italicized. So that's putting emphasis on his will, amen, and his good pleasure so that Christ get the glory out of everything. You know, I, I get to the place, you know, my mom would always say, you know, you got, uh, y'all, you and your brother got too many trophies in this house. Y'all got to start taking some of those trophies home, amen. A lot of those trophies may have my name on it, the years that they were accomplished and things of that nature, but it was only for my pleasure, amen, because I love sports, amen, and because I love, you know, that team effort and things of that nature. But how many of you know, I can't take any of those trophies home to glory with me. I cannot take any of those trophies with me, amen. Those trophies will be here long after I'm gone, amen. But what is it that to the good pleasure of God, amen, that the works that I live speak for me so that when I see my Savior face to face, amen, he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, amen. That is my desire that I hear him say, well done. That's got to be all of our desire. Amen. You know, we want trinkets along the way. We want things, amen, to remind us of our accomplishments, amen. But I'm desiring more than ever the good pleasure of God. I'm desiring even if a soul be saved, amen, at the sound of my voice or at some of the works or the labors that God has birthed within me, I desire them to say, God be the glory, not to even, I, I don't desire God's credit. Amen. I don't desire all credit comes to Christ. Amen. Who's the head of my life. You know, a lot of times we say Christ is the head of our lives. Amen. But we put every one of our works on Facebook. Amen. We want to feed the homeless, but have it on Facebook. We want to, you know, do everything, but have it on Facebook. Buy a child some school supplies and have it on Facebook or online. Amen. And you can your just reward right there. Amen. But can you do some things anonymously just so that God gets the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Again, I can't do it for you. I cannot do it for you. One thing when we go into a classroom, amen, for those that are stewards and those that are continue to, uh, continuing to pursue in the life of academia, amen. You know, there are times that, you know, even my child, you know, I'm calling her or something like that. You know, if I'm calling her to come downstairs or something, no, I can't. I'm taking a test. Amen. And how many of you know, even online, those exams are proctored? That means that the, the person that is giving that examination to you or administering that examination wants to confirm that you are indeed doing your own work. Amen. And that's got to be the same way we're on this, you know, in this classroom of Christ. Amen. God is wanting to see how lazy are we or are we truly determined in the things of God? 
I know you weren't feeling good, but you pushed, woman of God. I know that, you know, you had a lot on your plate, but you pushed, man of God. I know that that migraine was really, uh, you know, pushing you on today, but you still continue to do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. We've got to quit hitting the absentee ballot and we've got to push forward. Amen. Because I can't do it for you. Amen. I cannot do it for you. Your mom can't do it for you. Your dad, your sisters, your brothers cannot do it for you. But we've got to work out our own salvation with fear. That's a fear of God. That's a reverence of God. That's a true trust in God and a respect for God. And trembling. God, that I don't want my labors to be in vain. You know, there's got to be something. Have you ever handled something expensive? Amen. You don't handle it just in and every kind of way, amen. You're even more uh, subtle to touch it. And, you know, you want to walk carefully to make sure that you don't uh, shatter or destroy it, amen. And that's got to be the same, you know, level of detail and the same, you know, care that we take with the things of God. I don't want to break somebody's, you know, heart or, you know, something or say something out of line that, you know, they desire never to come into the household of faith anymore because their church heard, amen. I don't want to say something, amen, in, in such a manner or do something in such a manner that folk decide to give up on Christ, amen. Most of the time that determination has already been made in their heart, amen. And sometimes people are already on that fence, amen. But we got to tell them the truth and love. But there's a way that we have to go about it, amen. Realizing we can't do it for them. If we go forward here and it says, again, his good pleasure, let everything that you do for the edification of the kingdom of God, let everything that you do do for the glorification of God, the father, amen. Let everything that you do be all praises to God, amen. Do all things without complaining. You have some people that everything, you know, you yeah, you get to a place where, oh, God, you already imagine in your mind what they're going to say, because there's always some level of complaint. Amen. There's always some level of criticism. Amen. But here it says right here, do all things without complaining. We sing that song, I won't complain. But how many times do you get right back in the car? Or either, you know, right offline and start complaining again. Complain, complain, complain. Amen. But now is the time that we've got to give praises. Amen. We've got to be able to think on those things. How the word of God said, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of a good report, think on those things. And if you've had some time saturating your mindset into those things that are pure and lovely and of, good, of a good report, it's hard to really get to a place of complaining because you've got to be uh, at a place, God, I've got, I desire to find good in all things. I desire to speak life into all things, even if it's somebody that's going against the grain. God, you touch them. God, they're in your will, amen. But God, I desire more and more of God. To God be the glory. If you're not feeling good today, I dare you, amen, to, to step on that serpent's head and say, God, you said, amen, that I shall rise and take up my bed and walk. You said, amen, God, that, you know, I, I, I have healing because healing is the children's bread. Healing is my portion. And that's the way we do things without complaining. You know, a lot of times people, well, well, I, I'm, I'm dealing with my this or my that. And you've already given ownership to that thing. Amen. It's like you've already, you know, purchased it out in full. Your, your name, your, your, your name is on the deeds of that house of complaining. Amen. But God is saying now we have got to, we got to change our vocabulary. We've got to change the way that we speak and we've got to stop taking ownership of everything that comes our way. Speak life. The weather is unfavorable outside, but God, you knew that this day would come forth. But God, I thank you that I have life. I have it more abundantly. You know, the weather may be turbulent outside, God, but I know you called this, this winter season for a reason. Amen. God, I know that you created the snow, God, so I'm not going to question you. God, even the ice you created, I'm not going to question you. Amen. There's got to be some things that we've got to start having some, um, how you say, mature conversations with God. 
you know, you can tell the level of maturity that you have in your children by by their conversation, how they complain or how they begin to tackle some situations in their life. God is looking at our level of maturity. How do we even look at the weather? How do we even gauge relationships that we have in our life? Amen. God is calling us to maturity. So without complaining, that means that we have got to watch the words that come out of our mouth. Begin to speak life. Begin to call those things that be not as though they were. Begin to give God all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. And do you realize, as I mentioned the matches earlier, that your conversation can begin to catch fire. Amen. So some of the things that you begin to say and some of your mannerism can begin to catch hold to others. Amen. And some people that may have had a desire to complain or things of that nature begin to say, well, I know that the woman of God always says this. I'm going to try it for myself. Amen. Just like the song says, you know, for, for the songwriter to say, try Jesus, he is all right. I done tried him and I know that he's all right. That gives others the unction to begin to want to try Jesus. Amen. So in our actions, we've got to be in that where we begin to urge others to try something different, to try more in Christ. Man, I see man of god your faith is completely different from what it was last year woman of god i see that your faith is completely different from what it was last year it's like god has elevated you higher you even have a higher praise you have a higher you know worshiping the things of god a, a deeper prayer life a deeper rejoicing amen you can tell the level of a person's maturity amen are they saying the same old thing that they did the beginning of last year or has there been a change like never before there's got to be a metamorphosis you know, and a, a metamorphosis, if you look, um, even after a caterpillar goes up, it climbs. How many of you know it's got to be a climb first? There's got to be a journey. And then it gets up to an elevated position. And then you start seeing that cocoon cover it like never before. And, then, you know, I, I mentioned briefly about that cocoon on last week as well, too. But that cocoon begins to cover it. Amen. And then something about when it's out of that cocoon it's undergone a metamorphosis a change amen where before it had to climb but now its legs have even changed and it has wings amen and a lot of people look at the beauty of its wings amen but now it can fly there's got to be a metamorphosis in our spiritual life that man that prayer life has taken hold Amen. There's been some manifestation there. There's got to be something now in that metamorphosis. Man, that worship has ushered in the spirit like never before. And it's even a difference in the tone that that man or woman of God sings because they've seen the Savior face to face. Amen. And here we go again. He says, do all things without disputing. You see some people that want to argue about everything argue about everything go tit for tat is what we said growing up amen they want to go tit for tat in everything amen but i respectfully decline amen god has taken me in a place so much i can't afford to allow you know god god is taking a lot of us we've got to have that mentality i'm sorry i'm sorry but i can't engage in that conversation because god where god is taking me amen I, I can't have any of that stuff latch hold to me, amen. I, I can't get to a, this place, amen, of going back and forth, amen. Because God's word says, how can two walk together except they be agreed, amen? You know, how, how can we walk together if there's always a difference? How can we walk together if there's always some type of friction, amen? But God is calling us now. We got to do some things without disputing and complaining because all in all, the goal is that Christ be glorified amen you know and I, I desire every day god let something that i do or say be something to change the life of others that are around me amen even if it's in the grocery store you're pushing your buggy down i'm not amen and someone may have had a terrible day amen but just by seeing you and seeing uh the glow over your life could be something to change them amen just even your conversation or either if you see somebody drop something along the way i'm sorry uh ma'am you've dropped this or done something amen we've got to get at that place 
we've got to get at that place that it's not about us. Amen. And he says right here that you may become blameless and harmless. Amen. We see that this is the season where many that say that they've been in Christ, they've given God the, you know, they've given God their all. Amen. They've made God the head of their life. Amen. This is the season that accusations are flying. Amen. So let the works that I live speak for me, God. Don't let me get, get caught off guard, amen. God, let me always be on guard, amen. Let me be the woman of God in season, out of season. Let me be your child, your, your beckoning light. Let me be the woman of God that you called me to be, amen. In season and out of season, in my home, out of my home, amen. The same way I can pray in church, God, there's going to be some prayers going on, amen, in this house, amen. The same way that I am in, at home or in, in society, amen, let there be some prayer going off in my vehicle. Let there be some songs of praise and some worship all over the place. And I just know even if there's non-believers in my neighborhood, I'm one that's praying, God, you have dominion over this neighborhood. Hood, that some prayers that are prayed right here in this house, amen, can saturate the whole neighborhood, amen. We've got to get to a place where we realize, amen, it's bigger than us. It is so much bigger than us. We've got to be seed planters in this hour that we plant the things of God, amen. How many of you just, have you even thought to think, how many school systems are in your neighborhood? Can you imagine the prayers that you pray, amen? Even the prayers that you pray as you're riding by those schools, amen. God, I pray, amen, that, you know, you protect the school, amen, and that you protect the children and the teachers, amen, that you bring back, amen, the Ten Commandments, God, that you make all believers, amen, that they say they yield unto thee. Maybe a lot of things aren't happening in society because we're not doing what we should do we're supposed to do outside of the building. Amen. I just think about how, you know, the vision of this house is we're not concerned about the building, but the building of a people. There are people outside of the building that need to hear the sound of your voice. There are people outside of the building, amen, that need to feel an encounter. Amen. So we just got to go forth. Amen. Here it is. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked, and perverse generation. We're seeing so much in this hour. We're hearing of so much in this hour, amen. But don't allow that crookedness or that perversion to latch hold on your life. Let it be so much so that your life is righteous and, you know, upstanding to the things of God that God I just have the ability. God, I pray that my life be something to change at least. Let there be one. God, let there be some that are changed under the sound of my voice. This is saying, this is already warning that there's a crooked and a perverse generation. Amen. It's like everything that we were taught is out the door in the lives of some. And some already have that mentality to go against the grain. Some people don't even know what a Bible really looks like. Amen but allow Christ to be within each and every one of us. Amen. Allow the lives that we live be something to call someone. What must I do to be saved? God, I see I'm in this job right now. Why can't I have the joy, unspeakable joy like Nick does over, over on the inventory line or wherever, God? Why can't I have the same joy, amen, that that Kathy does, amen, with, with, with the people that she interacts with. God, why can't I have the same exact joy, amen, that, that Mike does with his inventory of the people that he deals with, amen. But God is saying, it's all on us. Accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There's got to be a level of urgency. You know, we, we, we have, we've, you know, we, we continue to go on this merry-go-round merry-go-round one thing about a merry-go-round amen you you've been you ever been on a merry-go-round amen i'm, I'm dating myself because i'm not even sure if, if playgrounds even have merry-go-rounds anymore amen but i'm dating myself you know there'd be a time we would get out there amen and some of us messed up some good old blue jeans amen at that time we get up you know the merry-go-round you know we were really talented if the you know we could start swinging the merry-go-round before we 
even get on it, amen. And then latch a hold and jump on that merry-go-round and go, go, go. But then we fail to realize when the merry-go-round stops, we're back at the same place. I dare not to be back at the same place. I dare not to be right back at the, and this is why we say, I can't do it for you. We got to dare, we got to dare to go further in the things of God. Amen. I, I can't do what minister Yolanda does. Amen. I can't do what pastor Fleming does. Amen. We've got to push higher and further in the things of God for ourselves. Work out our own salvation. God, I desire to be the best version of me that you have equipped me to be. God, if there's anything within my life that is not pleasing unto you, please, God, purge me with his son. Please make me over. Take control of my life. And then we've got when we say that stuff, we got to be willing to let some stuff go. Some of us clutch hold to some things that we refuse to let it go. But God's saying we got to let it go. Let it go. It's not beneficial to where God saying it's not beneficial to where I'm taking you. Let it go. You ever had to try and pry your child's finger off of something? Amen. God is saying we got to let go of some things in this hour to move forward. Amen. And it says right here, we already said a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You're the odd ball out. Amen. How they said the odd man or woman out. You're no longer the, the norm anymore. It used to be, you know, churches on every corner, amen. And, you know, everybody, everybody was in church on Sunday, not just on Easter. Folks don't hardly go to church. Well, let me, let me be honest. Folks don't hardly go to church on Easter Sunday anymore either. Amen. But that was the norm, amen. Churches on every corner, everybody in church. There was revivals. People don't do, you know, you don't hear about revivals or much anymore. There was, there was things that, you know, that called us out to be different. And, you know, even people of the world had a, re, a, a respect for that. But now it's like we're the extinct breed. The remnant remains, amen. We are the remnant. We are the called out ones. But will you continue to be about your father's business? I can't do it for you. Will you be about your father's business? Will you pray without ceasing? I can't do it for you. Will you meditate on his word? Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I can't do it for you. Will you trust Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior? I can't do it for you. You've got to do it for yourself. You've got to push. You've got to push in the things of God. You've got to trust in him. The same way we see here, it says in the word, the word lights in the world, lights, we're beacon and lights because something within us shines different. And I, I like, uh, and I just thank God for uh, the version in Matthew that also says we're the salt of the earth. You're the salt. There's a lot of bitterness around. There are a lot of things, you know, but folks got to be able to say, man, if I call Sister Erica, I know I'm going to be uplifted. If I am just around Minister Jeannie, something around her glee and her presence is going to encourage me and push me in the things of God. Amen. That, 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 is, that lets you know right now we are the light. There's a lot of darkness. Amen. But we are the light of the world. And we have got to stand forth in that. Amen. Again, work out our own salvation. God, however I started this year off, amen, I desire to go full-fledged in the things of you, no matter what's going my way. And I, I mentioned this, uh, it, it's just like in my mindset right now, God, nothing else, nothing else, nothing matters. And then God, I desire to be pleasing in your sight. I, I desire, amen, to, you know, I, I desire, you know, we hear the words that we hear the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. I desire one day when I see my Savior face to face, I desire to hear the angels rejoicing. I desire, amen, to sit at his feet. I desire to be in his presence, amen. There's got to be something we've got to work down here to ensure, amen, that that work is done. Folks already, here it is, January. Folks have already, folks already, I can just tell you how people are. People that have that vacation mindset, they already set out for a vacation, amen? Here it is, January. 
they've already determined in their mindset that they want to go on a vacation in the summertime. Amen. So hello, they've already um, talked to their groups or whatever and have already began making down payments on whatever cruise or whatever trip that they desire to go on, amen? But nobody's making down payments on their life in Christ. Nobody is determined that, that their destination is heaven is their goal. Why is it that the world has you so programmed that you, you, you're wanting to make all of the, tr the trips and everything else, but you're missing heaven? We have got to work out our salvation with fear and trembling so if it's anything that i can never be known for amen i can be known as that player amen that you know number nine was my number amen that left hand person that got up to bat to play sports amen and, or either to play basketball amen but i don't want to be known by any of that stuff i want to be known as well done thy good and faithful servant i want to be known as the one of god amen that can get a prayer through not somebody that's just going to say a prayer out of habit or or tradition amen god is refining some things even in our prayer life amen i don't want to be so Someone that just stands up to say the same thing that I did on last week or last year, amen. I desire that God do a new thing within me, amen. There are many dimensions of our life in Christ, amen. And we haven't even scratched the surface, but it all comes with our belief and it all comes with our faith in him. It all comes with our trust in him. And it says here, holding fast to the word of life this is our life this is our supplication hold fast to it you know so many things change online hold fast to this hold fast to this god that thy word have i hidden in my heart that i will not sin against thee have you ever seen somebody that you haven't seen in a while and you have such an embrace amen hold fast to the word of god in your heart amen and you know, so many times if you miss that person so much, you're going to rock from side to side, amen, just to let them know, amen, let there be an indication that you missed it. But the word of God is here. The word has to be hidden in our heart that we will not sin against thee. You're not feeling well. There should be some word of God that is regurgitated up. You you, you, you know, you hear some things, amen, there should be some word of God that comes up, amen. I get up every morning, amen. And one thing I make sure, you know, God has placed in my heart. One of the one of the many scriptures that I always read, 23rd Psalm, amen. And then also Psalm 91. It's just, you know, I, I also, you know, Psalm 121, amen. There's got to be something in us. And then whenever God will take me to a new scripture, I'm just voyaging in the things of God. But then in my study time, that's when God takes me even further and deeper. There's got to, we've got to set apart some time for God. Amen. We have got to set apart some time for him. Amen. And just know here that we are working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. You may have fear and trembling when it comes to your job. Amen. I want to get that paycheck. I want to make sure I'm paid, you know, on these times. Amen. When it's time for payday. Amen. But the elders used to say payday is coming after a while. This is our real payday right here. Work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And he says here that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Have you ever worked on something? And then had to put it aside because, nope, it was the wrong project to work at that time. You don't want all of your labors to be in vain. You don't want something that you've started, amen, to be in vain. I'm one of, uh, you know, I, I look at pastor, amen, I'm one I like to crochet as well, too. And whenever I have time, you know, I would sit down and you know, crochet, whether it be work on a blanket, beanie or something like that. And, you know, you ever get to a point where you're not paying attention, you may miss a stitch or something. And I'm one, I will pull it all apart and start all over again. I mean, you don't want your labors to be in vain. You don't want to be out here confessing to all, amen, that you're a man or woman of God, amen. And then when it's time, amen, judgment comes. You don't want to hear depart from me you workers of iniquity 
I don't want my labors to be in vain. I desire to hear well done thy good and faithful servant. You know, we could be called every name under the book, amen. Evangelist, elder, amen, Latrice. Uh, at home, my parent, you know, family calls me Trees, amen. But I desire to be called servant. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Let that be the desire that we desire to hear in this hour, amen. Don't let your labors be in vain. Again, I can't do it for you, amen. I, I, I just, we, you know, that's got to be our mindset. We can't even do it for our children. You know, let the truth be told. We can't. We can speak the word of life to them, amen. We can speak the word of God to them, amen. You know, train a child up in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. But the ultimate decision is theirs. We can't do it for them. So now in this hour more than ever before, let's accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, not just in, in, in words, but in our actions. Our actions tell the tale if we really serve God or not. Our actions tell the tale if we really, really believe in God or not. God, I don't, I don't want to call in. I desire to have my hands to the plow. Again, I can't do it for you. So in this hour, we have got to, we got to push on. You know, no one says it's going to be easy. No one says that, you know, the burdens are going to be light. Amen. But there is a level of grace. We carry it. We push. We trust in the Lord. And we've got to know we're pre each and every one of us are, are presented with certain facets of life that we have to encounter. But we've got to know that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. You may not be feeling well right now, but you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Speak life to yourself. Speak life to yourself. Rise up as the man or woman of God. Amen. And I'm one, you know, um, those that do are, are close to me. Um, I've always uh, suffered from migraines. Amen. Um, and I'll just say this is part of my testimony. Amen. But around uh, and I've, I've, I've shared this with a few before. Amen. In 2006, I almost died of what they call pneumococcal meningitis, where my sinuses got so bad it affected the lining of my brain. And at the time, I thought it was just my usual migraines, amen. And But those things, I, got, I just thank God, even in the midst of being in the hospital for two weeks, and they had all already, you know, given my parents, uh, you know, a bad report at the time, and uh, my ex-husband a, a bad report at that time, amen. But you know, to God be the glory. The doctor said out of everything, I didn't even know my name. I just woke up. All I kept saying was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's got to be a push in us. Anytime I'm not feeling well, amen. From time to time, if I got a migraine, Jesus, 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 I'm pushing on in the things of God. And that's one thing that I, I, I love my pastor for. I just thank God. The woman of God says she is pushing in the things of God. Amen. We've got to have a push in this hour. Amen. And, you know, and I just look at my pastor. Amen. And I just, you know, I gloat on it. I just thank God for the woman of God. Amen. You know, she tells half of her testimony. She does not look like what she's gone through. Amen. The woman of God pushes and she even in the midst of her, her, her times. Amen. She still has the strength to encourage others. That's the life that I want to live, that I'm pushing forth in the things of God. Amen. I can't do it for you. Amen. But let's be determined. Let's be determined to push on. Amen. I just thank God for all of those that are under the sound of my voice. You are on um, our Facebook page of Discipling Ministries, a place that we're not concerned about a building, but the building of a people. Again, I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We realize we can't do it for one another. Amen. But we push forth in the things of God. Trust in him. Lean and depend on him. Amen. And I just thank God for our apostle and our prophetess. Amen. And I just thank God for them being mighty men and women of God that encourages us, amen, to let us know that we can push on and we can fight this fight of faith, amen, this good fight of faith. Again, this is uh, Elder Evangelist Thomas of Discipling Ministries, a place where we're not concerned about a building, but the building of a people. And in honor of my apostle, I say peace. God bless you.